What up, it's boy, Mr. Dan Tamri Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Tuesday, April 10th, 2018, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mel, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Disney Lucasfilms released its second trailer for Solo, a Star Wars story on Sunday. Written by Lawrence and Jonathan Castan and directed by Ron Howard, Solo is the origin story of smuggler Han Solo, the resourceful smuggler Harrison Ford played in Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, Star Wars Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back, Star Wars Episode Six: The Return of the Jedi, and Star Wars Episode Eight: The Force Awakens. Sorry, Alan Enright as a young version of the wisecracking hero. The latest chapter in the franchise is set for a worldwide release May 25th after the Cannes Film Festival premiere. So it will also feature Donald Glover, Amelia Clark, and Woody Harrelson. This weekend's two-and-a-half-minute preview feature Han and his Wookiee psychic Chewbacca, played by Junus Sutomato, flying their iconic spaceship, the Millennium Falcon. It also shows Han meeting Glover's Lando Carizian, who was first played in the Star Wars universe by actor Billy D. Williams. In Solo, Lando boasts to Han that everything you heard about me is true. Clark's new character, Kira, it tells Han he looks good, a little rough around the edges, but good, and suggests he is, quote, after something. She wonders, is it revenge, money, or is it something else? Harrelson's Tobias Beckett tells Hans he's, quote, heard about a job. Tobias says, a big shot gangster is putting together a crew. Hans tells him, I'm a driver, I'm a flyer, I've waited a long time for a shot like this. Hans asks Chewie, who is revealed in the trailer to be 190 years old, what he thinks about his plan. The Wookiee shakes his head and makes a signature sound of complaint. Han brushes him off, well, what do you know? Tobias later warns, assume everyone will betray you and you will never be disappointed. Han ultimately dies at the hands of his adult son in The Force Awakens. Actress Florence Pugh as WWE superstar Paige meets Dwayne The Rock Johnson for the first trailer in the first upcoming film, Fighting With My Family. The clip, which premiered over WrestleMania weekend on the WWE Network, featured Paige and her brother Zach, portrayed by Jack Lowden, asking Johnson for advice before heading into an audition for WWE. Johnson launches into one of his signature rants, where he berates the siblings for looking like rejects from Harry Potter. Johnson then explains that his intensity was to show the newcomers how to win over over the crowd. Fighting With My Family is inspired by Paige's real-life journey to WWE and is based on the documentary The Wrestlers, Fighting With My Family. Johnson is executive producing the film, which is a co-production between his and Danny Garcia's Seven Bucks Productions. Miss Your Films, Film 4, and WWE Studios. Steven Merchant of The Office fame is directing. American Horror Story co-creator and producer Ryan Murphy discussed details about Season 8 of the anthology series, including who it will star and that it will be fantasy-inspired. Murphy teased Season 8 during a panel for the latest season of the series Cult, alongside cast members Sarah Paulson, Evan Peters, Cheyenne Jackson, Billy Eichner, Adina Porter, and Leslie Grossman. Murphy announced that all six stars would be returning and gave a timeline for Season 8. He said it is set in the near future. I will say it is set 18 months from now. Uh, he added, we sort of getting back to the asylum convent feel. That is the tone of it. And he continued after stating that season eight will be heightened in addition to being fantasy inspired. Other announcements include that Paulson and Peters will each direct an episode of season eight. Three minority leads will be featured and Porter is betraying a hairdresser with Joan Collins appearing as his grandmother and production will begin in June. American Horror Story season eight will also star Kathy Bates, who is returning to the series. Murphy also said that he is in discussions with Angelica Houston for an unspecific role. AMC has announced that season three of their supernatural drama Preacher is set to premiere June 24th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The official Facebook page for the series said on Monday, get your affairs in order and your soul ready. We're coming back alongside an image of star Dominic Cooper as West Texas preacher Jess Custer turning on a light. 
Preacher, based on the comic book series of the same name by Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon, follows Jess, his ex-girlfriend Tula, played by Ruth Nega, and Irish vampire Cassie, played by Joseph Gilgun, as they journey to find God and save the world from demons. Season 3 will feature the trio returning to Angelville, a Louisiana plantation where Jess was, rest, was raised. Deadline reported. Ian Coletti, Graham Matavich, Pip Torrens, Julie M. Emery, Malcolm Barrett are also set to star alongside series regulars Betty Buckley and Colin Cunningham, Jerry, Jeremy Childs, Liz McGreever, Joni Coyle, Adam Crosdale, and Prima Cruz have recurring roles. Kevin Smith announced via Twitter on Monday that Showtime will air the comedy special he was filming when he had his February 26 heart attack. The 47-year-old performer and filmmaker tweeted, The comedy special I was shooting with at Comedy Dynamics the night I almost died of a heart attack has been picked up by at Showtime. Mark your calendars. It airs May 11th on the same network as at Show Homeland. Thank you for the home. Hashtag Showtime. The cable network also confirmed the air date in its own social media posts. The 47-year-old star was filming the special in Glendale, California, when he started feeling ill and canceled the second show to head to the hospital. Doctors discovered Smith had a 100% blockage of his left anterior descending uh, artery and underwent emergency surgery. The Dogman Clark's writer, director, star recently said he lost nearly 30 pounds since his health crisis. Netflix has renewed Alexa and Katie, starring Paris Berlick, Isabel May, and Tiffany Thiessen for a second season. The streaming service said Monday, we're happy to report that Alexa and Katie, Netflix's first tween sitcom, will be returning for a second season, sophomore year, Here We Come. Uh, the synopsis notes, despite the fact that Alexa is un- undergoing cancer treatment, her outgoing personality and enthusiasm for life never faltered, especially with her loyal and awkwardly adorable best friend Katie at- by her side. At times, they're left feeling like outsiders during a period when what seems to matter most is fitting in. The ensemble of the series also includes Emily Kelly, Eddie Shin, Jolie Jenkins, and Finn Carr. Season 1 is streaming on Netflix right now. Colton Haynes is returning to the CW's Arrow as a series regular for the superhero drama's upcoming seventh season. Haynes will reprise his role as Roy Harper after her last appearing in the 15th and 16th episodes of season six alongside original cast member Willa Holland, whose status for season seven remains unknown. The pair were last seen going on a mission to destroy Lazarus Pits around the world. Haynes appeared briefly in the first season of Arrow before becoming a regular on the second and third seasons. He also showed up in a guest starring role in season four. Haynes said in a statement, I could not be happier to return my role as Roy Harper alongside my Arrow family. Uh, the CW says, we're very fortunate and excited to welcome back Colton to Arrow. While we've always enjoyed Colton's return to the show, we couldn't be more thrilled to have him return as a proper series regular. And we're very excited about all the creative opportunities Roy Harper's return affords us. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle would like charity aid instead of wedding gifts. The 33-year-old British royal and 36-year-old American actress requested in a tweet Monday that well-wishers support their charities of choice instead of sending presents. Kensington Palace wrote, Prince Harry and Miss Meghan Markle are incredibly grateful for the goodwill they have received since their engagement and have asked that anyone who might want to mark the occasion of their wedding considers giving to charity instead of sending a gift. The palace added the couple have personally chose seven charities, which represents a range of issues that they are passionate about, including sport for social change, women's empowerment, conservation, the environment, homelessness, HIV, and the armed forces. Harry Markle suggested Children's HIV Association, Crisis, the Myrna Mala Foundation, Scotty's Little Soldiers, Street Games, Surfers Against Sewage, and the Wilderness Foundation. Kensington Palace tweeted, uh, Mina Maha empowers women in the Mumbai slums by providing them with a trusted network, stable environment and employment, and the chance to grow as individuals and business women and break taboos against menstrual hygiene. Uh, the Palace also added, also selected is at Street Games, a charity which uses sports to empower young people to kickstart a cycle of positive change in their own lives. Prince Harry and Miss Markle visited one of the charity's projects together in Cardiff earlier this year. Harry and Markle will marry May 19th at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle. The couple support a number of charities and other organizations, including the Invictus Games, which Harry founded in 2014. 
Real Housewives of Atlanta star Kenya Moore is going to be a first-time mom. The 47-year-old television personality announced she's pregnant during part one of the Bravo Show season 10 reunion, which aired Sunday. Moore is expecting with husband Mark Daly. She told host Andy Cohn, we'll definitely be welcoming a boy or girl in late this year. Moore was reluctant to share more details, saying she's just hoping for a healthy baby. The star explained, I just don't want to talk about the details. I'm still just very nervous about everything, so I just want to get past a safe place. Moore said in a tweet Sunday night that she is carrying her child herself not using a surrogate. She also hinted she would like to have more kids in the future. The television personality wrote in response to a fan inquiry, no surrogate, but maybe my next one. Moore and Daly married in June after six months of dating. Moore voiced her desire to have children in an interview with E! News in December after she was spotted visiting a fertility clinic in Barbados. She said at the time, I absolutely want children. My husband wants to have children with me and we are working on it. I'm hopeful that within in the year, I'll have a little one running around. Part 2 and 3 of the Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 10 reunion will air April 15th and April 20th. Second, respectfully, the series co-stars Nene Leakes, Candy Burris, Cynthia Bailey, Portia Williams, and Sherry Whitford. Ali Klum is getting close to new beau Tom Kalitz in Mexico. The 44-year-old model and television personality went topless during her vacation with the 28-year-old musician Sunday at Cabo San Lucas, according to Page Six. Klum sported black bikini bottoms and mirrored sunglasses as she enjoyed a sunny day with Kalitz. The Tokyo Hotel guitarist was seen straddling and kissing Klum as she soaked up rays on her lounge chair. Just Jerry reported Klum and Kalitz arrived together Sunday in Cabo San Lucas. The rumor couple left the airport with their arms around each other. Klum and Kalitz were first linked in March after they were spotted leaving a party at West Hollywood, according to Us Weekly. The pair was seen kissing later in the month as Klum took a break from filming America's Got Talent. Klum, who confirmed her split from Vito Schnabner in September, recently went topless for her first ever Maximum cover. The star said in the cover story, Confidence is sexy. There's something alluring about a person that just seems at ease and comfortable with themselves. It's something we should all strive for. She said it. I looked at photos of when I was 24, and of course, I'm going to look different now at 44 and having had four children. But again, it's all about being comfortable with yourself and what you see in the mirror. Klum is mom to 13-year-old daughter Helena, 12-year-old son Henry, 11-year-old son Joan, and 8-year-old daughter Lou. Glee alums Leah Michelle and Darren Chris have announced a joint North American summer tour that begins in May. The LMDC tour kicks off May 30th at the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville before wrapping up June 10th at the Sony Central in Toronto. Michelle and Chris will also visit Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Washington, D.C., Indianapolis, Columbus, Eastern Pennsylvania, and Newark, New Jersey. Tickets go on sale to the general public starting on April 13th at 10 a.m. local time. A pre-sale begins April 11th at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Michelle and Chris discussed the tour on the Ellen and Jarrett Show Monday, saying that the concert series will feature songs from Glee, Broadway, and the pair's own music. Brooklyn Beckham appears to have a new love interest in his life. People reported that the 19-year-old British model got close to 20-year-old Canadian model Lexi Wood during an outing Saturday in Los Angeles. Beckham was spotted kissing Wood at the hideaway at Suit X ta- uh, Tattoo Parlor in West Hollywood, according to Us Weekly. Wood hung out with Beckham as the star got a new tattoo from Dr. Wu. Dr. Wu posted a photo Saturday on Instagram of the pinup girl he inked on Beckham's forearm. Uh, the, two, the tattoo artist captioned the picture, Classic Vargas pinup for a classic fella at Brooklyn Beckham. Beckham was last linked to Chloe Grace Moretz, with whom he reconciled in August. Beckham celebrated his 19th birthday with Moretz in Paris in March and has yet to announce a split from the 21-year-old actress. Moretz said in a post on Beckham's birthday, Never stop smiling. I love you. Happy birthday, Brooklyn. Beckham, the son of retired soccer star David Beckham and former Spice Girls singer Victoria Beckham, last shared a photo with Moretz on Valentine's Day in February. Blake Shelton is voicing his love for girlfriend and adopted Oki Gwen Stefani. The 41-year-old country star couldn't help but gush about Stefani in an Instagram post Saturday following the 48-year-old singer's latest visit to his ranch in Oklahoma. Sheldon uh, shared a photo of a collection of arrowheads that Stefani has found on his property. He said in the caption that the Make Me Like You singer had a knack for finding the artifacts. Sheldon wrote, 
Hey, at Gwen Stefani is official with your arrowhead finding eye. You are now an adopted Oki. Side note, I love you, pretty girl. Hashtag truth. Shelton and Stefani often visit Shelton's ranch in Tishamongo. Uh, Stefani shares 11-year-old Kingston, 9-year-old Zuma, and 4-year-old Powell with ex-husband Gavin Rosdale. Spent spring break with her sons at the property in March. Sheldon said in an interview with Today that the same month that having Stefani's boys in his life is a fun and meaningful experience. The country star says, I never saw that coming, but it's so fun. He also added, at this point in my life, I kind of had put that, well, I guess that wasn't meant to be. And then all of a sudden, it happens one way or another, and it's like, wow, I really missed out on a lot. So having them around is, I don't even know how to describe it, it's so much fun. Shelton and Stefani confirmed their relationship in November 2015 following their respective splits from Miranda Lambert and Rosdale. Carrie Underwood is confirmed as a performer for Sunday's 53rd Academy of Country Music Awards Gala in Las Vegas. Underwood will give the world television premiere of a soon-to-be-released single at the MGM Grand Garden Arena ceremony, which Reba McIntyre is set to host and CBS is scheduled to air live. Previously announced ACM Award show performers include Lauren Alina, Jason Aldean, Kelsey Ballerini, Dirks Bentley, Kane Brown, Luke Bryant, Kenny Chesney, Kelly Clarkson, Flora Georgia Line, Alan Jackson, Lady Antebellum, Miranda Lambert, Little Big Town, Midland, Mayor Morris, John Party, Baby Reha, Thomas Brett, Bay Lake Shelton, Keith Urban, and Brett Young. Among the celebrities to serve as presenters are David Burnett, Drew Breeds, AJ Buckley, Cam, Sam Elliott, Eve, Ashton Kutcher, Dustin Lynch, Nancy O'Dell, Rebecca Romaine, Max Thero, and Leslie Vaughn. Underwood has been keeping a low profile since she fell on the steps outside her home in November, breaking her wrist and requiring 40 40 to 50 stitches to repair a cut on her face. Fleetwood Mac says lead guitarist and vocalist Lindsey Buckingham will not appear with the band at its future concerts. The musician said in a statement to Billboard on Monday without offering details regarding Buckingham's current absence or possible future with the iconic rock group, Lindsey Buckingham will not be performing with the band on this tour. The band wishes Lindsey all the best. Mike Campbell from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers and Neil Finn from Crowded House will play with Fleetwood Mac on tour in his place. Uh, drummer and Fleetwood Mac co-founder Mick Fleetwood said in his own statement to Rolling Stone magazine, Fleetwood Mac has always been about an amazing collection of songs that are performed with a unique blend of town. We jammed with Mike and Neil and the chemistry really worked and let the band realize that this is the right combination to go forward with in Fleetwood Mac style. We know we have something new, yet it's got the unmistakable Mac sound. Buckingham has played with Fleetwood Mac off and on since 1975. The Google Dolls announced Monday its plan for a string of concerts throughout North America this fall. Cyrus XM presents Google Dolls Dizzy Up the Girl 20th Anniversary Tour. It's a kickoff in Phoenix September 30th and is scheduled to wrap up in Las Vegas November 18th. Tickets are to go on sale to the general public Friday. Lead singer John Resnick said in a news release issued by Live Nation, I'm incredibly excited to share this album in its entirety with our fans. Dizzy Up the Girl was released in 1998 and featured some of the group's best-known hits, including Iris, Dizzy, Black Balloon, Broadway, and Slide. Alex Rodriguez says meeting girlfriend Jennifer Lopez was, quote, the luckiest day of his life. The 42-year-old retired Major League Baseball star recalled his first encounter with the 48-year-old singer and actress on Monday's episode of The Ellen DeGeneres Show. He told host Ellen DeGeneres, I described it as the luckiest day of my life. Rodriguez said he was looking for his car after having lunch when Lopez tapped him on the shoulder. The star recounted, I turn around and I do not recognize this person. And it's Jennifer, but she's dressed up as Harley from Shades of Blue and she's in her jeans and her big boots it took and it took me about four or five seconds and he says she said it's jennifer i go oh my god jennifer you look beautiful i was so embarrassed and then i got a little nervous she says you have my number reach out and i went home that night and reached out lopez has said during an episode of the of the show in april 2017 that she saw rodriguez at the restaurant and approached him outside singer recalled i was having lunch somewhere and he passed by i saw him walk by and then afterwards i went outside for some reason i just felt like tapping him on the shoulder and saying hi rodriguez and lopez confirmed their relationship in march 2017 the couple purchased a 15 million dollar apartment together in new york in march following speculation they planned to marry lopez said in the april issue of harper's bazaar i do believe in marriage and i would love to grow with somebody in a committed relationship but i'm not forcing anything right now it's good it's healthy we communicate well 
And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1970, Paul McCartney announces the breakup of the, the, of the Beatles. The legendary rock band The Beatles spent the better part of three years breaking up in the late 1960s and even longer than that, hashing out who did what and why. And by the spring of 1970, there were a little more than a tangled set of business relationships keeping the group together. Each of the Beatles were pursuing his musical interests outside the band, and there were no plans in place to record together as a group. But as far as the public knew, this was just a temporary state of affairs. That all changed on April 10, 1970, when an ambiguous Paul McCartney self-interview was seized upon by the international media as the official announcement of a, P of a Beatles breakup. The occasion for the statements Paul released to the press that day was the upcoming release of his debut solo album, McCartney. The question, is this album a rest away from the Beatles or the start of a solo career? Uh, Paul responded, time will tell. Being a solo album means it's the start of a solo career, and not being done with the Beatles means it's just a rest. So it's both. Uh, question, is your break with the Beatles temporary or permanent due to personal differences or musical ones? Uh, Paul responded, Pers uh, personal differences, business differences, musical differences, but most of all because I have a better time with my family. Temporarily or permanent? I don't know. I don't know. Question, do you foresee a time when Lennon and McCartney becomes an active songwriting partnership again? Paul responded, no. Nothing in Paul's answers constitute a, de a definite statement about the Beatles' future, but his remarks were nevertheless reported in the press under headlines like McCartney breaks off with the Beatles and the Beatles sing their swan song. At whatever his intent at the time, Paul's statements drove a further wedge between himself and his bandmates. In the May 14, 1970 issue of Rolling Stone, John Lennon lashed out at Paul in a way he had never done publicly. John said he can have his own way, so he's causing chaos. I put out four albums last year, and I didn't say an effing word about quitting. By year's end, Paul would file suit to dissolve the Beatles' business partnership, a former process that would eventually make official the unofficial breakup he announced on this date in 1970. Also on this date in 1972, Charlie Chaplin receives an honorary Oscar. As part of his visit to the United States in 20 years, British film pioneer Charlie Chaplin accepts an honorary Academy Award for his incalculable contribution to the art of filmmaking. Chaplin, one of America's most successful movie stars and directors, had left the country under a storm of controversy in 1952. Born in London, England in 1889, Chaplin was the son of music hall performers, and he appeared on stage from a young age. His father later died and his mother was put in a mental institution leading to a rough childhood that ended when Chaplin joined his half-brother's vaudeville troupe at the age of 17. Max Sennett, the innovator of U.S. slapstick movie comedy, discovered Chaplin during a U.S. appearance by the vaudeville troupe. In 1913, he was signed to appear in movies produced by Sennett's Keystone Company. In his second picture, Kids Auto Race at Venice, 1914, Chaplin originated the character that would make him famous, the Little Tramp. The Tramp wore a derby hat, neatly kept mustache, baggy trousers, and canes, and affected a bow-leg walk in his oversized shoes. He was an underdog hero beloved by moviegoers, and Chaplin would play him in more than 70 films. In the era of silent film, slapstick was king, and Chaplin was a master of physical comedy. He became one of, mo one of the most recognizable U.S. personalities and commanded increasingly high salaries. He soon took on to directing his own movies and with Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks, and D.W. Griffin founded United Artists in 1919 so he could have greater control over his projects. Chaplin directed, star in, wrote, produced, and composed the music for his feature-length comedies including The Kid, 1921, The Gold Rush, 1925, City Lights, 1931, Modern Times, 1936, and The Great Dictator, 1940. These films addressed social and political issues of the day, which seen through the eyes of the little tramp appeared in it a little sharper. After the event of Sound in the late 1920s, Chaplin appeared less often in movies, but his fame continued to grow as his films won new audiences and became recognized as motion picture classics. Away from the camera, Chaplin's personal life often drew sensational headlines. He was married four times, three times to his leading ladies, and in 1943 was accused of another woman of fathering his, her child. That year, in another controversial move, he married Una O'Neill, the 18-year-old daughter of playwright Eugene O'Neill. Chaplin was 54. Chaplin's political views were also criticized as he was failure to apply for U.S. citizenship. 
pressed by back taxes and accused of supporting subversive causes by McCarthy-era America. Chaplin left the United States in 1952, informed that he would not necessarily be welcomed back. He retorted, I wouldn't go back if, there if Jesus Christ were president, and surrendered his re-entry permit in Switzerland. He lived with his family at Corsier de Vivier, Switzerland, and made several more films. In April 1972, he did return to the United States for a visit and accepted an honorary Oscar. He had previously won an honorary Academy Award in 1929 for the circus in 1928. In 1975, Queen Elizabeth II knighted him. He died on December 25th, 1977. And that is your entertainment report for Tuesday, April 10th, 2018. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for The Entertainment Report and it'll take you to the page. Good night and God bless you all.